Loose lips sink ships. Truer words have never been spoken. Recently, a young woman came out to explain exactly why. Oh, ain't no party like a Diddy party. And it is more crazy than you could ever imagine. So after you watch this, you will have no doubt in your mind that more people are about to get indicted. And according to this woman, one of them is a prince. So today, we are gonna hear this um special workers talk to you Kwajang the cool si about how she was tricked by a prince and barely escaped the baby oily grasp of the diddler. You cannot outrun me! I am black! So get that popcorn ready and make sure you have installed Express VPN. If you're like me and always enjoy researching things online, especially that real sensitive stuff like aliens and conspiracy theories, then you must develop a habit of using a VPN, yo. Because for anyone who likes to pursue the truth, you need to know one thing. Whatever website you're looking at, from governments to corporations and oftentimes both, they can see everything you're doing. You're basically transparent on the internet, yo. And turning on a VPN is your first step to investigating the truth online. And ExpressVPN offers exactly this kind of protection. It encrypts and reroutes 100% of your network traffic, giving you an extra layer of anonymity, making it a lot harder for trackers and monitors to find you. Not to mention, for our viewers who travel frequently, you're probably used to connecting to those free unencrypted Wi-Fi at hotels and airports. Well, ExpressVPN can protect you from hack attacks, yo. You ever watch one of my favorite TV series, The IT Crowd? Then you know exactly what I mean. By the way, that show is not available in every region, yo. But with ExpressVPN, you can keep up with this series and any others, no matter where you go. All you gotta do is click that link right down there in the pinned comment in the description down below, sign up for ExpressVPN, and you will get three extra months of privacy protection from ExpressVPN for free. So now that you have installed ExpressVPN and gotten three extra months for free, let us all join hands and say it together. Say it with me, America! So this interview comes from one of the coolest, rawest, realest YouTube channels on the internet. Soft White Underbelly, single-handedly run by Mark Leta, an award-winning photographer for the likes of Apple, Adidas, and Mercedes-Benz. Mark's guests feature people who are practically invisible to American society, from cartel members to gang members to S-workers to homeless people to pimps to addicts and much, much more. Real talk, his interviews are so raw and candid, most of them can't even be monetized. So make sure you go to Mark's channel and show him some love, because a lot of these people's voices would not be heard if it were for him. I've tagged him and left a link down in the description below. Now back in 2022, this young S worker appeared on Mark's channel and she specializes in one thing, sugar daddies. And when she first appeared on Mark's channel, she told the story about how she had a sugar daddy who was an Arab prince and she very fleetingly mentioned going to one of Diddy's parties. So then he says, well, we're going to go to Cuba. So the girls start talking in the house and they're like, girl, I got to get back home. And he said that I can't leave. And I'm like, well, what is he going to do with us? Then, you know, we had went to some celebrities house and we ended up at P Diddy's house and I just started hearing conversations and I just got trafficking from it because I heard the prince saying something like, oh, you can have whoever you want. Like he was like selling us, you know? Now remember what I said before, this video wasn't even uploaded until December, 2022. And Cassie and Rodney didn't file their suits against Diddy until 2023 and 2024. And Diddy's houses didn't get raided by the FBI until just a couple of months ago. And back in 2022, the media was barely even paying attention to what Diddy was doing. So needless to say, at the time, a lot of people in the comments called her a liar. But now in 2024, with Diddy being indicted in a list of 120 potential victims, everyone believes every single word she is saying. Enter in Tanea, who just four days ago reappeared on Mark's channel for the second time with only one topic on her mind, Diddy's after party. And this time, you might want to take my man Samuel Jackson's words literally. Hold on to your butts. That party traumatized me. How'd you get invited to it? By being with a prince um, that I met in LA. He lived in Glendale, California. And, um, you know, long story short, I got out of this crazy little contract and I was looking for somebody to invest in me. And I knew somebody who knew somebody that was like, I want to introduce you to a prince. He know a lot of celebrities, da, 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 producers and stuff. So I never put two and two together that this prince knew P. Diddy. And you say a prince, prince of what? Um, he was from, he was a Arabian prince. Really? Yes. Oh. And he really was a prince for real. But 
I wasn't worried about him being a prince. I was worried about who he actually knew. So an Arab prince living in California. Now for legal reasons, I have to say that I am only speculating. We are 100% in Yokuna Modo. This is only my educated guess, not the truth. It's true. So needless to say, I did a little digging to find out exactly what type of royalty was living or have lived in LA during the time of her story. And this is what I found. Saudi Arabian prince Majed Abdulaziz Al Saud. I hope I said that right. Once you understand what this fool is involved in, you will understand exactly what Tanea was talking about. So Majed is a big fan of hip hop and R&B and is known to show off his lavish lifestyle at big celebrity parties and hang around a lot of big people in the entertainment industry. But back in 2015, my man caught a charge, an sexual assault charge. And once you hear what he was accused of, you'll understand exactly why I think he has a connection to Diddy. Police say 29 year old Saudi Prince Mehed Abdulaziz El Saud is accused of assaulting a worker at the $37 million estate. A neighbor told our partners at the Times he saw a woman bleeding and screaming for help as she tried to climb over an eight foot wall surrounding the property. The prince was arrested shortly after and booked on suspicion of forcing or on a woman. El Saad posted a $300,000 bond and was released. Now, following the incident, detectives found more victims who were also alleging crimes against Mr. Al Saad. And that ain't all, folks. According to a local newspaper, my man was caught doing some really gay sh And fun fact, the Saudis operate under Sharia law, meaning if you get caught doing some gay sh they will stone your ass, and not in the good way. So everything the Saudi prince allegedly did, that is, if he's actually the one that Tanaya is talking about, is exactly something Diddy would do. And the only difference between them is he has real oil, where Diddy, that nigga just has baby oil. Why are you gay? He met me, he said, I wanna invite you tomorrow to uh, Ultra Music Week. It's like an event for like two weeks where people party, 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 including P. Diddy, and they, party at Club Live, they party at like just in South Beach, Star Island, like where P. Diddy stays or throw his freak offs at. He ended up telling me like when we went to Club Live, he was like, guess where we're going tonight? I'm like, where? He's like, to P. Diddy's house. I'm like, oh really? That's crazy because I hear a lot about P. Diddy and I'm like, his house for what? Like to go sing? He's like, no, he's throwing this wild party. Oh, okay, so we went from Club Live it ended at like, the clubs end at like three or four and not two, like how out here is. So we waited around the mansion, the Prince's mansion for about an hour. And then as soon as 6.30 hit, we all got in the car, like a big Uber and um, me and all the other girls. Now mind you, I'm the only black girl. So I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm about to meet Pete Diddy. Oh, you know, like I'm probably gonna have to sing for him. Da -da -da. And I just tried to like keep my composure. So we get there and that's when stuff got weird. <laughs> and that's why they lock up our phones because they know what we see in there, you know, it's he he can get in trouble like right now. Now, although this girl is a sugar baby, like many of Diddy's alleged victims, she wanted to become a star. Most of these events and incidents occurred at parties, typically after parties, many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry were, were coerced into this type of conduct uh, in the promise of being made a star. And for someone like her, the chance to meet Diddy, an influential figure in hip hop and entertainment is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So as Tanea enters that party, she proceeds to tell the most explicitly detailed story about a Diddy party you have ever heard. Sheriff, he's over here. He's the ball being well, hi, oh my, gone quiet, we feel that shit, yo, because this is something you absolutely do not want to miss. One of his sons, I'm not gonna tell you which one, but it was like recruiting like whoever they wanted to go inside the house. The freak off is inside the house and in the backyard. So you have the pool and they're playing loud house music. Like the house music, it makes you feel kind of woozy, first of all, because it's like a rave or something. Dun, 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 dun. And it's real loud. So you can't really see nothing, but you're seeing everybody like walking around, drunk, hopping around. It's still 7 a.m. So the sun is like coming up and people are walking around naked, period. Let's get into it. They're walking around naked already and they're in the pool skinny dipping and they're drinking mimosas in the pool, but then it's like a waitress walking around giving people drinks, just passing people drinks, you know, and people are just taking them. Me, I don't drink like that, but I'll, I'm like an occasional drinker. Like I'll drink if we're partying or whatever, just for that occasion. So, cause people are gonna keep saying drink, drink, drink. But I didn't take a sip a drink of a drink yet, but I just had it in my hand. This might be one of the smartest things this girl has ever done. Do you remember way at the start of our Diddy series when we talked about how this fool actually had an SOP for his parties? Guys don't put those that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. 
Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, they see the bottles when they open them and they try to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. Now, those girls who like the mixed drinks, they're going to pour their own because they don't understand it ain't in the bottles, it's in the juice. Those guys, they learn that and they put it to those girls who don't know no better. Well, lucky for her, she didn't take a single sip. Ladies, why got the conchi there, huh? I've been DJing for 20 years at nightclubs, parties, and events. Do not take a sip of anything that anyone gives you you do not trust with your life. And dudes don't think you're safe either. In 2024, there's a lot of big dick deviants in these streets looking for a place to hide that meat. Hold on to your butts. So one of the sons seen me walk in my drum with other girls, but we split up. So I was walking with one girl. She's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me or her? And then he was like, no, you. Come here. So I went to him and he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like robe shoes, white shoes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But I'm thinking you could just go in the house if you want to, but everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. Now, this part of her story seems really credible because back in one of our previous episodes, we actually covered Lil Rod's lawsuit where he alleged that Diddy's son was in charge of not only selecting girls, but getting them to drink those spiked drinks. But what the hell is over these shoes? What are they, slip resistant? Seeing where Diddy the Jia the Deep and Hun Huarma? I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm holding the shoes. I'm walking around. You know, I'm a good loyal friend. I'm not going to go inside a house where they say my friend can't go. So we just walking around mingling. But we tripping out, looking at everybody like they off everything smoking and jumping around like hooligans. And so I seen P. Diddy or whatever, and I seen him with the prints. I'm not going to say what he was doing, but something really, I get real nervous. <laughs> something real crazy because I don't like to really expose people. I could talk about me, but when it's about, like me and my family, because it's us. But when it's other people, bro, doing something real sure, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, so that we can see and so that we can get turned on, okay? So he's doing something with himself. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, do you see him? She's like, yes, but mind you, we're screaming like, girl, do you see him? Oh my God, because of the music. And I'm just like, whatever. Then he starts to act like really obnoxious, like, I'm the king of the world, jumping around, doing all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's regular P. Diddy. So my man is doing something solo, but the prince is next to him, and it's all for the female crowd's enjoyment and excitement? Nigga, you gay. Well, whatever he was doing, it was enough to make even a professional working girl blush. So ladies, I ask you, what in the world could a grown ass man do solo that would get you completely excited? But what got me was how he walked up to me and was like, why are you not in the house? And I'm like, what do you mean? He like, how are you enjoying my house? So we had a little talk or whatever. He started talking about all these things. Oh, yeah, you're the one that, you know, I seen was telling me about the prince. He's like, um, oh, yeah, um, it's very nice to meet you. Like, your life is not going to be the same. Da -da -da -da. They, we started talking about going to Cuba. Are you going to Cuba with us? I'm like, what? And that's the thing. I didn't really know about this. So this is when I start asking around or whatever. And I said that in the last interview. But to get to the point, I ended up going in the house because he was on me, like, going to that house. I'm like, okay. And then the person that he was dating at that time, we're not going to say her name, but we all know, she came and was, like, looking at him like, what are you doing? Because he was talking to me for too long. So she came to, like, rub on his shoulders or whatever, and he just pushed her. And I'm looking, like, real uncomfortable, like, oh, I know what this is about. I don't want to be in the middle of there or whatever. So that's what made me go into the house because I'm like, okay, let me just go in the house. So I tell my friend, like, wait right here, girl. Let me just put on these shoes, see what this house is about. Well, based on the Diddler timeline, if Tanea herself said that she attended Diddy's party back in 2018, that would mean he was dating Cassie Ventura, the same woman he football kicked in the hallway of a hotel, and the same woman who finally escaped not only with $30 million of the Diddler's money, but also kicked off the FBI raid and the indictment of the Diddler himself. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, we did an entire episode on the horrible things that Diddler did to Cassie Ventura and how she finally got her revenge. But here's the thing that's kind of really weird. Why in the world would Cassie give a damn about who Diddy's talking to at this point? I mean, clearly she knew at these parties he was gonna mess around, but maybe it wasn't jealousy. Maybe she was actually trying to protect Tanea from going in that house. You better be careful. So, so far, everything that Tanea has witnessed has been outside of the house, 
post drinking, taking a couple of tokes, did he doing his single hand stroke? For the female enjoyment, of course. You know, normal shit. But the moment she stepped foot in that house, things took a very illegal left turn. Daiji Duodiao. And another one. Walk up in there. I don't judge people because at the time I was just smoking. But you know when people are out of their mind. You know what you don't want to be a part of. And it's just like I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. I'm, this corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having This corner, I'm just going to say, because I don't know what I can say, because I'm not trying to be incriminating myself. But they were dressed up like little Harold Juku Barbies. Like what? Little people, okay? We're not gonna say what type of little people, but like a fetish. And I'm looking like, what are they doing here? Like dressed up, little red lipstick, like they weren't supposed to be there. But I'm just looking like, maybe it's some type of production going on, but why would they be at this party at seven o'clock in the morning with grown people? Like why, why would they be here? Jesus. Now, she said something really important. When she started talking about the uh, little people dressed as Harajuku Barbies, she footnoted that with, I don't want to incriminate myself. Well, based on my acute powers of deduction, one could rule out doors as doors are hardly incriminating. That is, unless your name is Snow White. Weird. Weird. So what other small people could she be talking about? And also, she said those tiny people shouldn't have been up partying with adult folks at 7 a.m. in the morning. You gotta remember, Bieber and Usher both attended Diddy's after parties when they were just teenagers. And that makes me wonder, if everyone in that house knew that there were tiny humans there for the express purpose of, uh, hyping up the crowd, if they all knew that that's what they were there for and they didn't report it to the police after the party, wouldn't that make them accessories to the crime? There are indeed other perpetrators involved. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. Now you need to remember that Tanea is a sugar baby. Her job is to fulfill the desires and fetishes of men. Sex is her trade. But even she admits that she saw some things that night that she could not erase from her mind. Things that were far beyond her own job description. But then when I'm looking in this corner, this corner, this person laid out and I'm looking like, what's going on? Then I'm seeing like Instagram models or whatever. I'm like, oh, hey, so I'm kind of getting distracted, feeling like kind of comfortable. Like she's here. Oh, my God, she's here. And then I see P. Diddy, you know, walking through the house, like with his eyes on me. Like, you know, like, you know, you see it. Like, are, are you agreeing with this? Is this is? And I don't. Now, mind you, I still got my friend out there. So I walked out of the house and I'm telling her, like, oh, my God, bitch. like this is this is oh, my God, you should she like for real. But I'm just like, I'm not even tripping like, oh, well, like weird you know so i'm really looking at the situation like i don't even want to be involved in this type of stuff because once i see something i can't get it out of my mind and throughout this entire process the diddler was there observing watching and waiting waiting to see if she would accept and agree to the things that she was witnessing jesus this is worse than sod this is like a whore sodd wow, at the same time you make them feel like a star it's called mind fucking so of course i come out and then here he goes again, and another rapper, well-known rapper, comes and starts feeling on me like, hey, you. So now it just seems like everybody is faded at this point. They're either drunk or on all the drugs, obviously, with this house music. So now I just feel like trapped in. Like, I don't like it. And I know the devil when I see it. Because by me being so spiritual and tapped in, I know when something is not right. I'm not judging, but I just don't want to be a part of it because how am I going to get out of this shit? Like, I'm already here, and then I heard conversations or whatever, and then P. Diddy was like, that's the one that I want. That's, I want her. So now I feel like, you know, they plotting on me, like, did you bring me here on purpose? Like, is this the, you know, producer you was talking about? And I came here specifically with the Prince to rub elbows with people, to network for um, the music week. But then I put two and two together, like, the Prince have been saying, your life is never going to be the same. You're gonna be happy, somebody's expecting you. And I just feel like that was the time that I was gonna get sick or, you know, or, or something like that. I've been around celebrities before. If a rapper wants you or somebody wants you, they're not gonna do it, they're gonna send somebody else to do it. So if a waitress is coming or another girl or a pretty girl or a guy, they'll sick somebody on you. Like, take this drink, do this, do that. And then you just feel eyes on you, like watching the sea if you're gonna do it, when you're gonna do it. Can you feel my dick fucking your mind? Now this part right here is what I think every young woman should watch. 
And those of you watching now, you should share this with your friends because this is really real. This sounds exactly like Cassie's experience. Folks whispering in your ear, gaslighting you, manipulating you, overwhelming you with different and unique experiences, making you believe that the future will be beautiful. But in the end, Cassie's fate was just to become Diddy's slave. But Tanea ain't about that life, yo. She is street smart and she could sense the danger real quick. So I already know what time it was. And it's crazy because I had to leave that place. In my last interview, I told you I had to escape. I had to leave from the prince because he was telling me we was leaving for Cuba the next day. Cuba will. Would be Diddy or what? Like, th this is all crazy. So to see all of this stuff come out, and I escaped by leaving. I had to call the police and everything. I had to leave with the prince. That's another story. From the prince, from that house. I didn't leave with the other girls. I had to get my phone unlocked, of course. But, like, I had to, like, catch a, Uber, a taxi, not even an Uber, a taxi, to another location. And then I ended up going to the airport, and I ended up leaving because I just felt bamboozled. First, I'm getting lied to about how long I'm supposed to stay there. Then you keep talking about I'm supposed to meet this producer, but we're not talking about nothing with music, but you're talking about going to Cuba. We didn't even do what we were supposed to do in Miami, or did we do what we were supposed to do in Miami at this freak-off? But because I'm not cooperating with what I see, and I feel like, like, that's what the Illuminati and stuff is about, like, a secret society. Like, they want to see what you allow, what you cool with, and then next thing you know, boom, take that drink, you're dr Going to Cuba with a diddler? That's some straight up Illuminati sh yo. But I gotta say, I'm not surprised. Simply put, it's just a bunch of bored, rich, upper class folk using and abusing the lower class folk for their own evil amusement. Tanea was hoping the prince would give her a leg up in the industry, and it turns out Diddy was trying to get them legs open. This is Tanea's whole story, and although it sounds real, she could be lying, or she could have dreamt it up. After all, Diddy hasn't been convicted yet. Yo, cut on ticket, no seeker, ooh, well. It's true. Either way, this diddler situation is getting good. Like, you're a teen tie. And with this trial now set for May of next year, Tupac's brother has reopened the investigation into Tupac's death. Not only that, but we're only two weeks away from that lawyer revealing the list of names who helped out Diddy in his evil diddler deeds. Yo, cancel that Netflix subscription and subscribe to our channel right now, yo, because this shit is Gene's high as fuck. And after you've done that, let me know if you think Tanea was telling the truth. Remember to keep it civil and watch your language down in the comments, subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace!